Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you two techniques you can use to try to fix a broken Ubuntu installation when you're running it in a virtual machine uh, such as VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion for the Mac. The first of these techniques you use if the system is not too broken and by that I mean suppose what's wrong is you forgot your primary uh, user's uh, password and you can no longer log into the system. Or perhaps some package that um, uh, runs during the boot process has become corrupted and it's interfering with the boot menu uh, executing. Uh, in those cases you can get into a recovery mode. The recovery mode is a boot option. may not be immediately obvious uh, because the boot menu usually doesn't display but you can get the boot menu to display uh, in the following way. You power on the virtual machine. Uh, as soon as the virtual machine begins to power on you want to start clicking in the window uh, to capture the mouse and while you're doing that you also want to hold down the shift key. So again power on the virtual machine. I'm clicking in the window and I'm holding down the shift key and if I do that the grub menu will load and on the grub menu is a recovery mode and you can use the recovery mode to do a number of different operations as long as what you need to do can be done at a command shell prompt uh, with root access uh, then this is the technique for you. So arrow down to recovery mode, uh, press enter uh, it's going to load the recovery mode shell, uh, so I'm going to pause the recording while it does that. It takes just a few seconds. And here's the menu. As you can see, you can resume normal boot if you decide that you don't need to fix anything after all. Uh, you can try to clean the system, try to make free space. Sometimes a lack of free space will prevent the system from booting. Uh, you can use DPKG to repair any broken packages in case there's some application that's interfering with the boot process. Uh, perhaps it's been corrupted or something or other like that. You can update the grub bootloader, although that's usually not a problem you need to fix. And you can also drop to a shell prompt uh, either with or without networking. I'm going to drop to the root shell prompt just to demonstrate how this works. Uh, you can see now down at the bottom that we have the um, uh, command line and we're, we have root access and so we can execute any command we need to with root access. For example, um, if we forgot the password for our primary user and needed to restore it, um, we can enter a new password. And now that problem is fixed. So if you can do it at the command line with root access, this is a good technique. Unfortunately, sometimes there are things you can't do here. For example, suppose you get this error. This is an error that for some reason something's been corrupted or whatever in the file system itself and now it thinks there's a problem with the last mount time. At any rate it doesn't like this at all and what it's telling you is that there are unexpected inconsistencies and it's telling you to run this application manually. The application is file system check. You can try that at this point here. Uh, for example I can uh, run fs fsck uh, slash dev slash sda1. That was that um, uh, mount point that the error indicated had a problem. And you get this message, warning the file system is mounted. If you continue you will cause severe file system damage. Do you want to continue? Obviously the answer is no. Uh, the issue then is that, well, what if I try to unmount it? Well, since this is the primary partition, it won't allow me to unmount it because it's busy, and it's busy because we're logged in. So if we have this kind of error, we need to get at the file system without it being mounted. Um, then we have to choose a different technique. And the technique we're going to use is we're actually going to load the live desktop CD uh, within this virtual machine. And that will allow us to uh, run repair operations without actually having the file system mounted. To do that, uh, let me sh first shut down this machine. And while that's shutting down, uh, what you're going to need to do is go over to um, the Ubuntu website, if you don't already have it, and download the desktop edition. Uh, 32 bits, fine, start the download. That's this ISO file. Uh, that uh, would load the desktop edition. The desktop edition has two installation options. Uh, it has an installation option and it also has a try me option which loads a copy of Ubuntu in memory without um, actually um, mounting the file system. So I need to do a couple of things. Uh, first of all I need to edit the virtual machine settings and I need to actually attach that um, ISO image. 
Uh, and to do that, you just browse to wherever uh, you have your uh, virtual machines. Um, wherever you downloaded it, uh, this would be the Ubuntu 10.04 desktop i386 ISO. Uh, so now that's attached. Uh, the other thing you may find you need to do um, is that in order to boot from that CD, you need to catch the um, uh, VMware workstation boot process uh, in time to actually get into the BIOS setup so you can look at the boot, uh, um, boot menu uh, for VMware. Uh, and that's a little bit difficult to do because that goes by very fast. Uh, so what you may want to do here is edit the, f the, the configuration file for the virtual machine itself. Um, and to do that, um, you need to find uh, wherever your virtual machine is located. Uh, look at the folder for the virtual machine that you need to work with. Uh, and in, the fi in that folder, there is going to be a file that ends in the extension .vmx. You're going to want to open that with Notepad. You're going to want to go all the way down to the bottom, and you're going to want to add a line. And the line that you need to add looks like this. BIOS boot delay, make sure that's capital B uh, and no capital D, no capital B over here. BIOS boot delay equals 10,000. 10,000 is actually a count in milliseconds, so 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. That should be more than enough time to catch that menu. Uh, once we've made that editing change in the virtual machine configuration file, uh, we've saved that. Uh, we can come back and run the, um, uh, run the virtual machine. I'm going to power it on. Click on the window, of course, um, and this time you can see that you actually have a few seconds where you can grab the boot menu. You want to press Escape to get into the boot menu here. And that will allow you to select the device you want to boot from. So remember to click on the window and then um, press Escape in order to uh, get this boot menu. You want to boot from the CD-ROM drive. Now this will take a few seconds to come to a, um, a menu option, so I'll pause the recording. Now as you can see, there are two options to installing Ubuntu Desktop. One is a regular normal install, and if you tried that, that would either try overwrite or try to dual boot um, the, the desktop CD with a server installation that's already running inside this uh, partition. You don't want to do that. So what you want to do is select Try Ubuntu 10.04 uh, LTS. That will load a version of Ubuntu in memory and uh, that will give you access to the file system without actually having it mounted. So I'll select that. It'll take a few more seconds. Now once the system fully boots, and again what we've done is we've just booted a copy of Ubuntu in memory. It hasn't actually installed anything. We can go to the terminal under Applications, Accessories, Terminal, uh, and get ourselves a command prompt back. Uh, now with a live CD, you can run sudo without knowing a sudo password. You just run the command. And we can see now that we can run this command that we couldn't run before because dev sda1, which is the server file system, is not actually loaded or mounted at this time. Uh, now this um, is actually coming through a few different um, a few different options and it checks everything and um, finds that there's nothing wrong because uh, in our case there wasn't anything wrong with the system. If there had been issues then uh, it would have presented you with an issue, asked you to confirm whether it was um, uh, going to be um, uh, fixable, uh, whether you wanted it fixed or what you wanted to do. Uh, so in actual practice if the file system has become corrupted uh, this could take some time. Uh, and there may be other things you need to do here besides run file system check. I can't tell you how to fix every problem there is with an Ubuntu installation in a 10 minute video. Uh, but this is at least the way you get at it. Uh, once you've done whatever you need to do, you can simply shut down the system. It's going to ask you to remove the disk and close the tray. You can just press enter uh, at that point. And what you'll find is that when you reboot um, you get up to this menu, uh, you don't press escape for the boot menu, you just let it boot um, and your server system will boot um, hopefully fixed. Uh, and so that's it, um, two techniques for getting at some repair um, access points. Uh, the first by loading a recovery menu, uh, the second by actually running the live CD which gives you access to the unmounted file system. I hope that fixes your installations and thanks for watching.